Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's one of those weight scale sensors amplifiers. And look at that huge, huge unit. And it's actually quite heavy as well. It's made really, really super nice and stable and all that. that completely pro pro grade it was probably really expensive and it is made in western germany by hbm and i think their name is down here so i'll try and see if i can google these guys and find out a little bit more uh, we got all sorts of different settings here, zero, gain, we can zero here as well. We can more gain variable, this and that. And here you can set up the bridge for half bridge or full bridge, the excitation voltage, uh, one, five or 10, and all that kind of stuff. And also this module is called a K10. So let me show you the top here explains the connector breakout we also got a cable with all those wires coming out and this explains how to set up the the sensor element that they even say here a dummy so one of them is even a dummy so, so i mean they're only using one and uh, that is of course the worst possible way to do this because you need to have a balance of the sensors otherwise you're going to have big problem with temperature drift and all that kind of stuff well, let's look at the back yeah it's definitely high-end pro so the power supply is a model 243 and it's delivering plus minus 19 volts aha uh -huh. and we've got different upgrade possibilities you can even have a printer output uh, here we've got some other outputs. That will be our sensor connection. And I do have the mating connector and the cable. And I don't know what that is for. It's probably some outputs, right? So this is the amplified signal output. Got some different... Uh, oh, wow, nice little switches. Yeah, but we better just open and have a look what is inside so this thing right little have a look inside and yeah a really beautiful transformer got some capacitors and a regulator circuit and all that cables and some connectors that connects to the next uh aha uh -huh. so we got some back plane board here and then you can plug in your different uh, plug-in modules. We've got two different plug-in modules and only one is occupied in this unit. Oh no, what is... God damn it, what is that? This is absolutely bad. What kind of white, nasty stuff is that? Let's go into the super zoom here. This is really, really bad. And it's probably all over the place in this unit. Oi, oi, oi. This looks like salt. Funny, funny. So I removed all the aluminium sides so we can have a much better view of what is going on here. And this is the plug-in module for our um, amplifier module. So this is the base unit. This is, of course, the sensor input connector. I really want you to see this uh, track here. It's in the middle of the picture right now. Can you see this track that goes ziggity, ziggity, zaggity like that, right? So this is the top layer. I think you can... Yeah, now you can see it, right? So it's on the bottom side is a track that looks like this. And then, and then I can better explain with a fixed camera like this, right? So I think that will be the bridge 
sing, uh, sensor signals, and then it goes to some capacitors, and then it goes to the sensor signals like that, right? So the red and the black one, that is pro probably a uh, power supply, and that will be some, I don't know exactly what that is. But look, there's also a leakage track here, and also the top, top track there is not connected to anything, so it's just ends. This is also a leakage track. I think it's very impressive. Why did they do it that way? And this is, of course, the feels, the noise feels that will always be in a cabinet like this will, of course, affect both of the signals much more evenly when they're twisted like this. But, of course, why didn't they continue to do it and why didn't they twist the wires here? Uh, I mean, or why didn't they have this back panel metal shield like that why didn't that go all the way on the back because this board here is open on the back okay so this is the plus 19 and ground and negative 19 and let's have a little look where that is coming from so it's of course also go to the uh, that is of course an additional uh, plug-in module and it is not mounted mounted in our case i tried to clean uh, all this nasty stuff here on the connectors so that's quite all right and here we got the red and the blue that is the positive and the negative that goes to a power connector and then it goes to our power supply i want to show you this power supply is absolutely amazingly good design see everything here is isolated you can go like this and touch everything and you're not going to get electrical shocks you can't even stick your fingers into anything look how well that is designed see <laughs> amazingly well done and here's a plastic cover with a date code on it. So this uh, is from 89. And this frame here, that is from 90. So there's also a date code here. And then I also found some date codes on the different transistors and stuff like that. See, 89 and all that stuff like that, 87. So they have uh, had a lot of these on stock. And then they produce this power supply in 89. And I think it's a little bit funny to see this tiny little detail here. So the red is positive, okay? So this will be the unregulated rectified signals from the power supply. And then red goes to this transistor, and this is a 2955. So that is a PNP transistor. And then there's an op amp and uh, some transistors here. I think it's also a current limited see there's a current resistor here so both voltage and uh, current uh, controlled power supplies really really nice delicious power supplies yeah i kind of like that and the there's a toroid and this is shielded and we got different shield windings that's also connected to chassis here i mean just a pro pro level amazing this must have been expensive the way that this is done top top quality and here's the front where we can see that the frame is of course called a kvs 101a and it's from hitching up belwin mesh technique in west germany and this is our dc measurement amplifier And here is the measurement amplifier plug-in board. And there's also a date here, 89. And it's just absolutely amazingly well designed. I really like it. So those guys, they're using really, really nice quality products. And 
We've got the Boa Brown op aims. We got all the nice parts. Also, also some standard quad op aims. And what else have we got here? That one I don't know. G G thirty. What is that? Three oh eight. Uh, 308 is probably just an op right? What the heck is that? This one got their own brand name on it. Look at that one. So this is a decoder. Interesting their own chip is probably just a logo they put on and then it's just programmable Got a lot of little switches and configurations i mean look at all these and here and there 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 all these little configurations and what is inside this box Ooh. and that is a Plastic? No, it is metalized. Or it looks like it's plastic, but it's there's a thin layer of metal on it. We gotta take this off. So I removed the little shield box here around the first entry to the amplifier systems, and uh, yeah, I figured out. Uh, by the way, these uh, GG uh, three O eight. We got them all over the place, and there's one more here. Those are four in uh, in one package analog switches, just like four little relays for analog signals. And um, what else can I say about this? It's just yeah, absolutely nice and fantastic. <laughs> Look at those. Here we go. Those two resistors, I mean, normally I don't freak out so much about just resistors, but those are 0.01%. So if you look up resistors with these uh, with this kind of specification, and they are also these fantastic, yes, I think they're definitely, uh, yeah. I, I'm actually, I think those are about 10 euro each. So, so just those two resistors. Yeah, that is not too bad. But it's just telling a little bit about the quality of this uh, amplifier here. So, and you've probably also heard me yell and scream and cry about really really bad design stuff but this is just the other end of the scale where i sit and laugh all the time when i look at stuff because it's just absolutely fantastic and have you seen those 10 turn potentiometers before this tiny little size and you can you can really feel them they really really go good and there's also another little detail here at the front so, I don't know if I can sh yeah here here I can so they go real nice and fine here right but if you take a screwdriver and turn this screw here a little bit then this little piece of aluminium here this piece here moves to the side and it kind of locks the position see now you can't turn it isn't that just lovely? Yeah. Anyways, I don't have um, any of the sensors uh, at the moment, and I don't have a project that is uh, using any of those strain gauges. You can, of course, use this one for a lot of other things than just uh, strain gauges. But uh, I don't have any projects for any of this at the moment. So, uh, well, we're not going to power this up or anything. I really just wanted to show you 
the nice, nice design level of this uh, product. So with that, I want to say thank you very much for stopping by and uh, please come again soon.